disappointed. Hello, Vicky here and welcome to this special edition of The Bond Room Unlocked, whereby I'm going to give my honest opinion about the Amazon Prime stroke Eon TV reality show 007 Road to a Million, peppered in with some fun thoughts from fans from the community. Average. When this project was first announced, it didn't fill me with excitement. I'm personally not a fan of reality TV and I felt that this was going to cheapen the franchise. Um, why couldn't Eon spend the money on creating a new film, um, pushing aside that thing called No Time to Die and parking it, and starting afresh with an actor willing to bring some fun back to Bond? Underwhelming. What we actually get isn't what I thought it was going to be. In my ignorance, I thought it would all be about Bond. The locations, the questions, the challenges or missions, even the contestants to be Bond fans. But that's not the case. What we do get is a series of diverse, normal people, brothers, friends, um, son and uh, father, uh, placed into Bond locations. Then they have to answer 10 questions given to them by the controller, played by Brian Cox, to bag themselves £1 million. Pound. Misfire. So yes, we have these Bond locations, which are stunningly captured, I might add, and some Bond musical interludes or cues just to carry everything along with dramatic effect. But that's about it. The locations are lost on the contestants uh, in terms of Bond connections and there's nothing mentioned in the narrative or there are no film clips which I thought might be uh, the case to sh to highlight the location. It's quite frustrating really. <laughs> this must be what the creators wanted the, to have everybody disconnected from Bond because could you just imagine one of us from the community on this show? And we were, you know, if we were just plonked into a location, you'd have Philip Latchford there with his 007 on the tracks book. Uh, and you'd have Nick Fentiman trying to line up a shot on the location. And then there'd be the rest of us trying, you know, trying to get selfies. It, it would be an absolute nightmare. It would be an absolute fun watch, though. Hilarious. There's just one moment I want to focus on, and it's when the Bone Brothers um, arrive at the farm in, in Scotland. And they, you know, they... Um, heading to the barn and there is Auric Goldfinger's Rolls Royce and he's just blank, there's nothing, apart from him saying, nice car mate. I mean, I'm like, what? Bandwagon. And what of Brian Cox as the controller? He's a mysterious figure who oversees a bank of monitors watching all the action unfold, setting um, questions for the contestants. Is he supposed to be some sort of like Blofeld, creepy Blofeld figure? Um, and did anybody spot the Skyfall stag on his desk? For me, do we really need him? I think he was just there for added effect. A big name involved um, really for insurance purposes. And on the back of his succession success, I, I suppose they thought uh, this was a good call. Exhilarating. This programme is nothing new. A lot, a lot of people are liking it to race across the world, but if we go way back to the 80s, think of Annika Royce in Treasure Hunt or The Interceptor, where she trapezes across the UK looking for, uh, for clues. This is no different. They're just using real people. So all in all, we're just getting a reality TV show with real people with loose Bond connections. So does it really warrant using the logo? Whatever you think of this show, Amazon and Eon have done what it intended to do. Getting us to watch it and definitely getting us to talk about it. Thank you for watching The Bond Room Unlocked. Python.